Hey guys, it's I, Byron here, and I'm here showcasing my G-Frame units. That's right. This right here is a model kit line of model kit figures that I released uh, a couple years ago, back around, I legit do not know, back in 2021, I think. Pretty sure. Either 2021 or 2020. This guy released back. The only reason why I'm going off that is by D box out of the Blue Destiny unit that you see right here. Yeah, that right there says 2021, and I'm going to go probably a year before that, 2020, when these got released. As these are a line of model kit figures that have an inner frame that you build around and put our parts, and boom, you got some G-frame units, which are basically model kit figures. They're based, they just pop armor on, and boom, they're done. They're built, and they're pretty nice to have. Now, each of these G-Frame units are basically based on kind of model kits. Some of them, as you'll see, over, you'll see a little bit over here, are also based on other properties, as I do have three of the AWA units from Ava Galleon. But right now, you're going to see the front ones right now. As right now, you see Blue Destiny right now on the front. You free custom on the right. And the Gym Command in the middle. And behind them, you also get my Mark II, GPO. Zero one full burner high new. They got three Cosmo era units of the Blitz, Buster, and Dual Salt Shroud. So going off with and going off with showing off the first of these is the oh no. Well, there goes the headpiece. Head down, head down. Well, uh well, since head ones are coming first, might as well show off the one of the many pieces of well. Some of these have different pieces. As right here, you see right here, you have the headpiece of the regular of the regular Blue Destiny unit. It's regular mode. Just all the green and whatnot. And right now we have the Blue Destiny right now in exam mode. Woo! These are actually pretty nice and pretty cool and durable model kits. They actually are bendable forward. Now, I am going to go from this video depending on the figures, model kits, because... It's kind of hard to go in between telling them that. Now, these guys, I will say, have ball joints on the legs. And for most model kit builders, ball joints on older kits are kind of terrible. But these guys do a little bit of modification. Now, I wish a lot of the older model kits kind of do, could do that. Now, you actually could do that modification. I kind of did that too. Though, a lot of work because sometimes parts do come off. Or the ball joints for these guys have actually indentations on the top. So they're able to split longer than just being stopped a little bit like that. Instead of being something like how most high grades kind of stop like kind of like towards there. For those who want to know, most ball joints, not now, not, not a lot of modern high grades. Of the older ones that use ball joints, their legs were here. And you could probably get them all the way to probably here. These guys, because they have the indentation in there, can go all the way over there. Meaning these guys can do the splits. Woo! Look, splits. Woohoo! And I mean most. Now, oh, some of them are kind of stuck. Because the side skirts, once again, do kind of fuck it over. They do have single joints right there in the arms. Woo! I can see right there. Single joint right there. Woohoo! And these aren't, and they aren't, and they're actually, their shoulder are actually able to ready to pop off you can see the inner frame right there at least for the torso piece as the box right that we did see was the blue destiny units i'll show you how these are now where's that box out right here so going from the box out right here we usually go from oof, you go basically you build the inner frame first and one of the things you do is you remove the feet put the arms right there then you start adding the arms from there, you do the side skirts and top of the kneecaps. Then you attach the rest of the leg pieces together, on with the part of the torso. That's when you start attaching the torso together, rest of the kneecaps for the blue dust, and it's mainly for the blue dust, but general speaking, this works for almost all, all the G-frame units. Then you work on the arms, then you put the armor pieces on the feet, and that's where you start attaching everything back together. The front skirt, the hands, depending on depending on the different units and depending on the different heads then you have the shoulders the feet 
and boom, build and complete. And now you just attach and add whatever weaponry and equipment they have. As right now, well, I kind of have the beam, the pulp of submachine gun and the beam sabers together on both sides of the arms with the shield. Also, another thing about the Blue Destiny unit that shoulders and the thrusters on the side of the skirts, or, or knee, or legs, I mean, do slide off, which I can actually show you a bit. Though, I'll show you more in the legs because the arms are kind of in there and I'm going to need a tool. So you can see right there, it's right there is steady and stuff, and then you can just nudge it right there, and then boom, it comes off, when it, especially when it goes into exam mode, it needs these to basically be pulled off so it can like release excess steam and whatnot. You can also do this for this guy right here on the shoulder parts. Come on, come on. Oh, hey, hey, there we go. We did it. Ooh, see, see the difference. Ah, oh, goddamn beam saber. Why? Like, see right there, you can see the difference between the, well, it's right, sh well, it's left shoulder to me, right shoulder to you guys, to left to right, to right to left. I can see right there, there's inside, and over here, here's outside, extended. Now, most of these have these gimmicks, not all of them do. What's it cold? Another thing, too, about the G-frames, that they are all painted to how anime accurate they are, most of the time. There's some, some things that I might be missing, but they have extraordinary detail. I will say, especially way more detail compared to most high grades, as you'll see. Detail on the legs right here. Very good and nice. Then we have detail on the body, the head. Ooh. The detail is very, very nice on these guys. Like, I know for a fact, right, there would probably be people who are saying, like, my God, why don't we get this detail for the high grades? And I know. The shield even has slightly more details than some of them. Well, I will say to most of the older high grades, a lot of the newer high grades do have way more detail. And most of them would have. Oh, and then we go from the blue dust in every scene right here. To my gym command. Probably one of my favorite units. Actually, I will say. It's thanks to the G-frame line. That I end up becoming. I end up finding a little bit more love. With more units. Especially with the gym command. As I wasn't. At least my early years in Gundam. Wasn't a fan of the gyms. I always saw them getting their asses handed to them. In shows. So that's plot relevance. Because. You have to show the Xeon units destroying the gyms. Like you can see right here with the e freak can like boom, 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 just destroy easily. You lose the gym, then you go with whatever protagonist unit to fight. To fight the enemy. Right. To fight the enemy like always. But that's by straight to the show because they have to show. But we're going to go with like the details and schematics and specs for most suit you. For most suits, a lot of these gyms are actually kind of much more better and should win sometimes. But going all away from the bias and shows and specs and whatnot, a lot of the G-frames do come with a lot of extra parts. The gym command right here comes with two variations. Right now, it's in space type. So right now, it has the gym, it's gym command shield. So right now, it has another shield right here. As I have the ground type shield. So it comes with two different shields. Should pop off like that. Attach the... Give me one second, as the shield just popped off. God damn it. This always happens. Not gonna lie. Always happens. Ah. Ow. That hurt a little bit. Ah. Don't worry, Jim Command. It's not your fault. Sometimes this happens when you're doing reviews. Something falls off. Then you go from the from its beam pistol. Yeah, beam spray pistol. I'm pretty sure that's what's name. To the bullpup submachine gun that the Jim Command has, which I'm kind of a little bit jealous, not going to lie, to some high grades, that here's the bullpup submachine gun and the regular submachine gun of the regular ground type. Okay, let me do a little bit side-by-side side side comparison. Woo! Can we not see these a little bit better? <sighs> but do we have to be not walking? Trying to. Is that good? Probably. I don't know. I'm trying to make sure these are actually looking well. I'm going to pull up some machine gun for these guys. 
But you know what? Screw it. This thing doesn't want to focus anymore. Can I focus on this? There we go. That's focusing right there. As the Repulpa submachine gun. And then the last piece, removing its backpack. Removing the backpack of the space tab, which has multiple thrusters because it needs it for space. Remove that right there. It's actually pretty nice and simple when you see removing that. Not too tough. And then we put the regular backpack right here. Then we put regular backpack right here. That you see right here. Just two four thrusters with an antenna. For ground type, it's, it's a ground type unit. doesn't need that many thrusters. So I will, I will say otherwise. Because sometimes some units kind of do need more thrusters. And boom. Now the gym command is converted to ground type unit. Which is actually pretty funny compared when you compare it to different units. All that will leave you in ground type form. We'll put away its space type a little bit away. We'll re put you back. And from my gym command to another of the ground type units and a favorite of mine, which I'm kind of glad. I think this got a high grade recently, or at least last year. Not too sure. It's the E-Free Command, not E-Free Command, E-Free Custom, exam version. Pretty nice and good in detail-wise for this guy right here. Got the details on the legs. Details on the arms, the horns. Pretty nice, especially for most, most of those things, detail-wise. Detailed on the legs a lot, a lot of this. Like I said, there's so many opportunities for panel lining on these guys. I just, what's it called? I've not gotten around to it. And there's one thing I do like about these G-frames. There's so many opportunities to, like, panel line. And it was give you good practice and opportunity in case if you're not too sure of panel lining yourself and you get some of these guys. There's good panel line opportunity right there to panel line. And you get some experience. As I'll actually show you some of the guys who I did work on experience by. So the panel lines will actually see a little bit better because they're all white units. As you can see, my... What's called Jim Command, the GPO, full bur GPO zero one full burner, and high new. Now I will say, uh, the high new is a little more noticeable because the ink didn't run out on me <laughs> like it did for the Jim Command. As you can subtly see the panel lines on the dark spots on the indentations, the GPO zero one is a little bit better, but I'm gonna probably go back and do. Them a little bit more now i knew i did panel line to perfection as my ink did not run out as you can see this thing you can see where all the detail work goes for this it is fucking beautiful it's actually probably one of my favorites the fact that i don't have a high new is kind of sad i may try to go for the what's it called the real grade at a later date but what this does have some good printing on the arms. On the shoulder right here, on the left arm shoulder, has the armor of Signia. Which is fucking awesome. It's not decal or sticker. That is on there. Printed on there. And on the shield too, also has the armor of Signia on there too. What? Signia family crest. Not too sure. Should probably look that up later. And going from, what's it called? Basically the UC guys. Oh wait, we still have one more UC. The more two. A model kit that I will probably review later because I do have the AU version of this. As right now, this is the current, the Titans version of the Mark II. It's very detailed, very nice. I do love and enjoy it. Mark II is probably one of my favorite designs of Gundam. Especially with its movable frame. Comes with a beam rifle, shield, and rocket launcher. I know a lot of these guys don't really come with rocket launcher. They're extra weaponry. A lot of that's actually in their weapon box. But a lot of these G-frames do come in two parts, either in their regular MS mode, where you build just a regular mobile suit and be done with it, and then comes the second box, which comes with all their weaponry. Most of the time, the box art usually comes together. Sometimes, it's separated. I'm just glad with some of these guys, they come together. Now let's go from Universal Century to Cosmic Era of the G-frames that I have, which I currently only have three. And move the big boys, the full burner, new, and E free a little bit back a bit. Let's move forward the Blitz, the what's it called, the dual assault shroud, and the Buster. 
and just move these guys a little bit to the left. And you Destiny can stay there. As right now we have the Buster on the left, the Blitz on the right, and the Duel of Saltra, the three team, or like the three the three amigos, the trio. And pretty nice. The uh dual assault actually the dual assault shroud actually comes in two modes. Uh it comes in regular form or in the assault shroud, which you see right here. Right now, it's regular form, which basically you can just take off the armor. So the armor pieces that you see that are blue are removable, and you can swap them out for you can swap the skirts out, swap the shoulders, chest piece, the backpack parts, and the leg parts. I can see right here. You can see the difference between color scheme right there. That's where you can like separate them back and put on the regular dual Gundam right now. Right now, the problem is the parts for them are in a box. I don't know where that box is. I have like so many boxes stacked up on the side. I don't know where they're at. But yeah, uh, you can probably look it up and see how it is. But it's but pretty nice. It comes with a lot of detail. So this actually would have come in two boxes, but lucky for me, it was one of the bigger boxes. So. It came parts and part. One was the mold suit. The other was the weaponry and parts and extra equipment. And it's very nice and detailed. Also comes with extra stuff too. As you're able to open the hatch for its missiles. And launch the missile pods right there. Ooh. Got a regular beam rifle that's able to move the turret. Though only able to move the turret up and down a bit. Its beam sabers are just there as what's it called just... Just looky lookies, or just there for display, not for use. I mean, most of the beam servers are there for display and use. The beam rifle, again, not colored wise, is all in black, but it's still detailed compared to other stuff, too. Let me see if I can probably get more detail over here on this side. There we go. See, the detail is actually pretty nice, especially compared to a lot of, you know, a lot of high grades, it's a lot of their, their guns and stuff. Not very detailed. These are actually pretty detailed. So going from the duel to the buster. Another favorite of mine. This guy right here is pretty nice. I have him currently in all attack mode. His missile launchers and well, I will say be careful because those will fall off if you're not too careful. As right now, I do not know where that disappeared to. Oh wait, here we go. Here it is. For a moment, I thought I lost this. These are pretty easy to put back on. I want to say, give me one second. I'm trying to remember how to put this back on. Come on, in there. Come on, just jam in there. There we go. They just slide in, boom, and just slide out. Just be careful when you're like opening these up and down because they will they will fall. And then they'll probably disappear forever. As if anybody knows, as a Monica Builder, when you lose a small, tiny piece forever, and then you're never able to find it. And it's like, God damn it. But I didn't lose it. It's fine. It's weapon, it's beam rifle, and I think one of these is a rail I think the right one's rail cannon, the left one's a beam rifle. They have the little gimmick where they slide in and out. Right now they're currently attached to the hand, so I could do this and move the hands away. And the other one to spell, but that's fine. So these can actually toggle around. Move away. Dancing around. These actually could go away. And store themselves away. Just put them off. Boom. And now they are stored away in the blitz. It's now in standby mode. Not the blitz. Uh, the buster is now standby mode. You can actually put down the... Shoulders a little bit better like this, and boom. There are now Busters in standby mode. I will grab the other... Uh, I'll grab the, the cap piece later. I'll just put them back on. And then we have the Blitz. And let me tell you, the Blitz... Like, ever since getting the G-Frames, and especially the Blitz G-Frame, I really, really fell in love with the Blitz. It, it's... Just became a mobile that I just became enamored with. It's a stealth machine that has tactical tactical prowess awareness. It's got three uh, armor piercing rods or dense bills. We're gonna go with IBO terms for those who know IBO. It's got a beam saber and beam rifle. 
pretty good. It's able to pierce uh, anti-material ships, I think. And then it's Claw, which is able to grapple up against opponents. And it has two modes. Right now it's an over mode. It also has a close mode. Like I said before, was the armors for the blue assault or for the dual assault shroud currently put away. Its pieces also are in there too. And the detail work for this guy is pretty nice. I can see right here. And also, I think. Oh wait, no, this guy doesn't have the head particle beam cannon. I'm trying to remember who does. I remember somewhere else. Let me remember D double Zeta or somebody right now. But I can see right here, the detail work on this is really really nice. I, like, really, really do love these. I'm glad Bandai released these, uh, line. They are beautiful. And easy to build. Like, if you see these on shelves and whatnot, I would recommend getting them, regardless of which one. Even if you already have a high grade, or you already have a model kit of a one of right now, I will still get them. Because they are fucking good. And then last but not least, I think one of my favorite lines, which is a different variation... Of these guys is the Ava units. Let me just put away. Let me just put, push some of these guys a little bit back. As these guys are going to take the room. We have Ava unit. God damn it. I will say these guys are a little bit wonky. And say the least. As these guys in the frame are different from the G frames that you see behind you. As these guys have more of a slender frame. <sighs> As we have Unit 1, Unit 2, and Ava Unit 4, I think? I think the pink one's Unit 4. I'm not too entirely sure. But these Ava, uh, these Ava G-Frame Ava Units are a different line. They're still in the same line as what's called the G-Frames. They're just their own They're just their own line. Yeah, what's that? I'm trying to type it if it's called Ava Unit 4 or Ava Unit Where's my WTF? Sorry about that. I'm trying to trying to look up right now. No, fuck it. I'm just gonna call the pink one. Pink Ava unit for the meantime. Sorry about that. Because I have no clue designation number for this. I know it's either Ava Unit 4 or Ava Unit 13. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have to look it up look that up later. But design wise, these guys are pretty nice. Detail like once again, the detail work for these guys are pretty nice. Compared to any other kits that would, or any other figures and whatnot, detail works nice. The the detail, uh, what's called the lining or the indentations for it, so you can see all the all the detail. One that's pretty nice and good. These guys again can bend far and wide. Oof. I will say some of the shoulder armor kind of does block a little bit, so but they are movable, so it's a good thing. These guys can bend and they already fell. Bend wide and hide, but once it's cold, they do fall over a bit. That's how they're a little bit designed. I will say, these when I was mentioning some of these guys do come with weapon attachments or weapon packs, the Ava units are probably the definition of you buy them, you buy the base units, but then you also have to buy the weapons as unit one, the purple one, does not come with weapons, but unit two, and I'm gonna call you unit 13 just because I want to call you the pink one just 13 now. So 2 and 13 come with weapons, 13 comes with a pistol, which is nice and dandy. Uh, unit 2 comes with the two blades, which are pretty nice. But Unit 1 does not come with his spears, it doesn't come with long, I think they're called long Guinness spears. It just comes by itself. But, that's fine. It's detail work is still nice and dandy. It's pretty nice and beautiful. Let me see if I can just... My stuff. Come on. Sorry about the trying to get the trying to get the camera to focus. It's like a whole goddamn thing. There we go. But the detail work is pretty nice for these guys. I do enjoy these. Kind of wish I would have gotten more. I really wish the place where I got these had the weapon packs. But when I got there, uh, basically it was just just these guys on their own. I mean, I still got them because they're still good. They're still good price. I will say. I probably got these guys probably cheaper than how they're being sold online because the weapon packs sell for like, I think 20, 30 bucks. It's like, oh, 
I don't think I paid that much for these guys. I think I paid cheap for these guys, probably. I'm not pretty too sure how much. I forget how much I paid for these guys. But I'm pretty sure it was around maybe 12 to 15 bucks, give or take, on how much I've spent on these guys. But the weapon packs, well, these are the weapon packs I'm seeing online when I go to online stores. Hoping later down the line I'm able to get the weapon packs because I would love to have these. I'll probably do another review showcase of that. But I do enjoy these. They're really nice. And also since I don't have any Ava units at all, getting these guys for another model kit or another mecha franchise series, it's always good to have more and more. Like I love Gundam and all that, but adding more and more to my mecha collection is always great. And the G-Frame lines are always great for giving us more and more. I'm hoping later down the line for the G-Frames that we get more and more mechs. But we'll see about that. Knowing, uh, hopefully Bandai gives us more. Uh, but what's it called? Yeah. That's the G-Frame blinds of what I have at the moment. If you guys see them online, if you guys see them online, if you guys see them in stores. I know for me personally, Target is where I got most of these guys. Or at least seven or eight of them. Hobby Lobby is also another place where I also got them too. If you have like an anime store or whatnot that you go to and you see them, get them. See them online and they're a good price. Get them. They're pretty good. They're pretty. Not, they're easy to build. They're faster. I, w I would say they're relatively faster to build than the intra grades. Uh, Gunpla that Bandai has been selling now. As those guys are marketed 30, 30 minute or even 30 minute mission kits too. They're also 30 minutes. These guys can get it finished in like five minutes. If you know how to build them. If you don't know how to build them, it might take a little bit of time, but it, they're relatively easy to build. Uh, but what's it called? They're nice. Nice, easy builds. Pretty nice to have. They're they're beautiful. They're detailed. If you want them, get them. If you see them, I recommend getting them. I know there's other variations, too. I know they have a bunch of Zaka ones, too. I know there is the Strike. I want to say there's an Aegeus. If I see them somewhere down the line, I'm probably going to get them. I know I already have a couple of strikes already. I have a decent amount of strikes, but any other strike is always having good. It's always good to have another strike on them. But what's it called? That's out of the way. This is my G Frame collection. You guys, hope you guys liked it. I really I hope you guys liked the whole video. Uh, I will see you guys on the next one. This is Power Arden signing out, and I'll see you guys next time.